I'm not a genius. I never went to college and I'm 99.8% positive I have adult ADHD. But research has become one of my greatest strengths in writing high performing articles just like these ones. In this video, I will break down a very easy method I use to passively conduct research to write high performing articles and how you can use it to write single articles that earn literally thousands of dollars. The first thing I wanted to do is illustrate the power of research by showing you a few of my high performing articles. So first we have this one written about Alex Cooper, the host of the podcast called Her Daddy. Um, I wrote this in January of this year and you see so far it's earned just about $2,000 USD. Um, we have this one here um, about Andrew Tate, a very similar article in terms of its style and we've seen it can, it's earned the same, just over 1,700. And we have this one here um, on a beverage I used to drink in the morning, and this one's earned um, just under $1,500. Now, what I wanna show you here is, um, you can see the read time here is quite high, four minutes with 18,000 um, views. On this one, we have 15,000 views, four minute uh, read time. And then we have this one at the end, almost twice as views as the previous two with um, an average read time of about a minute lower. So the point here I want to illustrate is that a read time makes a big difference in your earnings. And one of the easiest way to increase your read time is to tell a captivating story. One of the best ways to, to tell captivating stories that set your stories apart from others is to offer unique information. And this is where conducting research comes in super handy. Now, there's a book I love called The Science of Storytelling by Will Storr that talks about how human attention works. And basically when we encounter change, it triggers for us to pay attention. I like to think of a reader as having an attention bar, almost like a video game where after maybe five seconds, it will get, get to zero and they will um, stop reading your article. So the more often you can give them unique information um, to recharge their attention bar, uh, the longer ultimately they will end up reading your stories. So instead of giving the same information as everyone else and having that attention bar run to zero, conduct your own research from multiple angles and use it to create unique, one-of-a-kind, and high-performing articles. And if the idea of research seems boring or overwhelming to you, don't worry, I feel the exact same way, and that's exactly why I use this very easy method to conduct passive research to expedite the process. Writing an article is like making a beautiful piece of pottery, and there's four major steps. First, you need to collect the raw materials, the clay, then you need to mold it into the shape you would like, then you need to shape it into a piece of pottery. And finally, you need to put on the finishing touches, add accents, and put it in the kiln to be baked into an amazing piece of pottery, which you can then sell, promote, or market. The first step is to collect the raw data, to do the research. This is a method for passive research. I call it reverse research. I never sit down to perform research on a topic because that's just not how my brain works. Um, if you can um, get from point A to B to C all the way to Z, amazing, I'm envious. Uh, but for me, my brain kind of works all at the same time. So instead of thinking of, of a topic and then sitting down to research for it, I collect data um, throughout my everyday life and then I take note of it and I use it to construct articles. That way I can use what's already in, in my head, on my notes, um, and uh, focus on getting into a flow state of, of building the story. And how this looks in everyday life is I consume the content I'm interested in. So for me, I listen to a lot of podcasts, um, I listen to audiobooks, um, and I just observe life as I live it. And Anytime something becomes interesting to me, I like to, to write it down and often I'll hear a quote or an idea and I'll think that's an article. So um, to use the example of the article here that I wrote on Alex 
Cooper that's earned me j just about two two thousand dollars American. So uh, for me being from Canada, it's about twenty five hundred dollars Canadian, which for one article I'm very very happy with. Um, essentially, how that happened, how that came to be, is I heard Alex on a podcast, and, and I heard her say something about being compared to Joe Rogan. Why am I always called the female Joe Rogan? Is, does anyone compare, say, oh, Joe Rogan's the male, the male Alex, Alex Cooper? Cooper? No. We I wrote down that idea in my notes app. I use an app called Notion to house all of my ideas and help organize my thoughts. If you're interested, I have a video on this topic um, that I will link in the description below. And over the next couple of days, I began listening to more about Alex Cooper. And anytime something kind of became interesting to me, I just added it to my notes app. Um, and I added a timestamp to the pot and I added a timestamp and a link to the podcast or uh, the source I heard it from. Then over the course of a few days, I had enough information to start actually building my article. So I just kind of picked up pieces of clay, compiled them into a big pile. It didn't have to make sense. Um, they, they weren't attached. It was ugly. It's all kind of in my notes app, but eventually I felt like I had enough raw material to start to shape my article. And one thing I'll add here is that um, if you're not sure what to write about, I've long since stopped trying to write on topics I think people will want to read. Instead, I write about what I'm interested in because I wholeheartedly believe that people will be interested if you're interested. And it means a lot more to me to feel excited and motivated about a topic than to force myself to write about something I think people might like. Okay, which brings us to step number two, molding the clay. So after you have your raw material what i like to do is just put is is just to dump everything on that spinning wheel so i open up um, because i write on medium uh, i open up the medium um, story composer and i just put all the information there um, and then i kind of just start to write a rough draft just like you would any other draft um, just kind of um, having the chunk of information i have at the bottom and then anytime something comes up that I had put, I had added a link to, I kind of stick it in there. Um, and if I need any information that I don't have, I just kind of put a blank, I'll put an underscore. So I'll say this person, then talk to this person on this date and I'll put an underscore if I don't have the date or I don't have the location, any of that information, I, I just leave as a blank and I just, try to put as much information into a story, kind of just a coherent shape as possible. So if you think of the analogy of, of pottery, I'm just kind of, if I wanna make a mug, um, I'm not trying to shape the mug too soon, only to have it fall apart. I'm just kind of starting to put it into maybe a cylinder shape, uh, ultimately knowing that eventually I'll get to molding it. So I just put, I try to use as much of the clay as I can, knowing that it's a lot easier to remove clay um, than it is to add it on after. And then once I kind of have a, a rough shape, what I do is um, I just go through the story. And even if I don't like the flow of the story, I just fill in the blanks to make sure I have all that information I, I need. So all the underscores um, on Medium, you can also add uh, TK, I, th I don't know what it stands for, but um, if you just um, press capital T and K on the story, a little T and K will pop up on the side, which kind of lets you, um, helps you remember notes. And if you try to publish that story with a TK, it won't allow you. Um, so I find that super helpful. So if I have a note to myself, like I don't like this or put this up here, or do I need this? I just put a TK next to it and then um, an aspect of the molding for me is to go th through and um, uh, action all those tks it's like on a google doc if you add a comment or an alert um, essentially the research part's super easy idea yeah, so any anything you write that you're stating as a fact as opposed to your own opinion needs to be backed from somewhere that's how i think of it and essentially i get the majority of my research just from google um and youtube 
So Google search, so if you need a piece of information, Google search the qu question you're asking until you can find a link to a source that's reputable. Um, so if it's about a current event, try to find an article from Forbes or Variety somewhere that has some authority. If it's on a health and fitness article, try to find one from uh, PubMed or, um, oh, I forget what it's called, but it's like NCI. I'm sure you've seen them where it's a an ac actual study. Those are obviously uh, the best sources because they come straight from, from the source. Um, or if it's a quote, I uh, find them on YouTube. So what you can do on YouTube is um, you can actually, um, instead of, if it's like, for instance, a podcast, and you don't want to have to watch the entire episode or skim it to find the exact quote, you can um, search in the transcript off option. You can go control F and look for keywords and then that will help to um, save you some time. And then essentially I just mold the story by filling in the blanks after I have a rough story. Which brings us to the third step. So adding in unique research makes your story unique, uh, but all the information in the world is useless if you can't convey it in a manner that's easy to understand and is interesting to read. So I always like to think of any articles I write as a story. And uh, this is because how humans store information is, uh, well, the preferred way they store information is through story. And the most simple archetype for any story is, um, is a three-step archetype of crisis, struggle, and resolution. So for any story I use, I try to use this as the skeleton. So um, you can use this for any topic you write about. And then what I do just to elongate the read time is I add in an introduction at the beginning, a summary at the end, and then at the end of each paragraph, I add what I call a bridge. Um, and I'll explain that right now. I have another video where I dive into my uh, process for writing articles as well. I think an image is gonna pop up here. And I have actually a Notion template that you can download that has it all mapped out as well for free. So if you're writing about hats, for example, um, your intro might be why hats are important. And then the crisis um, to get your reader engaged in the story might be explaining how it's hard to find hats that fit because everyone's head sizes are different and hats are made for um, a large audience of people. It's hard to find hats that fit. The struggle is this takes time and energy to find hats. Maybe you don't have the time or en energy to find hats and it's just, you know, it's tough for you. And then the resolution may be something like um, a way to, to measure your head size so you know what kind of hat will fit you. And at the end, I would add a summary of everything we covered, and that's essentially your story. Um, because people's attention spans nowadays are very, very short, within each of these sections, um, I would like to add a, a sentence or a paragraph that bridges to the next section. So um, if we use this one, um, what I did was, you can see here, just added a sentence that kind of intrigues them to, to carry on to the next paragraph. And these small things like the bridge or adding an introduction, these are, are, are the accents that make the, uh, the piece of pottery that you're molding unique and valuable. Okay, and step four is to connect the dots, to put on the finishing touches, to kind of zoom out to walk away and come back and see, you know, adjusting the incongruities, if that's a word, um, and uh, to put on the finishing touches before it goes in the, in the kiln to be finalized. A few things I do that are really helpful are, um, for one, I read the story back multiple times in different settings. So I like to read the story. What I like to do is um, I send myself a draft link and then I listen to the story as I read it. Uh, that way I get a visual um, and a audio um, 
rendition of, of the story. Uh, then I often take them out on walks. So um, I listen to them together and then maybe I take it out on a walk and I just listen to it. I just kind of try to look at the article from all angles. So if you think of it as, you know, you have the piece of pottery on the wheel, you kind of spin around slowly and look at it from all angles um, to gain different perspectives and adjust if need be. Um, I focus a lot of energy and attention on the headline um, because that's the first thing readers will see. Um, and that is essentially the door that opens up the opportunity for a story to even be read. Um, if they don't like the headline, they won't click on the story and all your work will be for nothing. I also use a few tools um, to help me with this. So um, Grammarly, just for spelling um, and, uh, and grammar, I use a, a website called Capitalize My Title, just to make sure the headline is formatted, um, like the title case is formatted correctly. Oh crap, I hope I didn't mess it up. And then I use a headline tool called um, co-schedule headline analyzer, um, which will get, use AI to provide a score of your headline of how um, readable it is. And like any AI tool, take it with a grain of salt. Um, you And uh, trust your gut and your brain, even if the score is lower than you would like. Um, off, you know, it's an AI, it's not perfect, but on average, you're trying to aim for a score that's above 70. Um, all these tools are free. Um, I'll add a link in the description below. And then finally, once I'm done, even if I think it's perfect and I want to submit it, I always sleep on it. This is because the majority of learning we do happens at nighttime and I want to, and you often um, come up with ideas or um, wake up in the morning with a new perspective. Um, and I found it really helpful. You can think of a sleep as putting it in the kiln. So after you put it in the kiln, it bakes and then it needs to rest. Um, I believe, I actually don't do pottery, so a lot of these analogies are kind of theoretical. Um, but if you, you know, but essentially think of it as the kiln, kind of the final piece. Okay, to summarize what we just went over, research is what makes your articles unique eye-catching, and from a psychological standpoint, makes people want to read them more. Um, quality content is like creating a beautiful piece of pottery with four major steps. So the first step is to collect the raw material, the clay, do reverse research to passively collect information that you um, will ultimately shape into an article, mold the clay, the article, um, by putting sticking as much information as you can into your story editor um, and then kind of shaping into a rough story and leaving underscores or blanks or tks um, for any information you don't have yet then shape the clay so fill in the blanks um, create the story add the bridges find the flow in the headings um, use the story archetype of crisis, struggle, and resolution. And then finally, put it in the kiln. Um, use your tool, your AI tools, or whatever you use to adjust the grammar, the headline, um, read it back to yourself so it makes sense and it flows well, and then always sleep on it before publishing. Okay, that is the end of this video. I really hope that helps you to write essays, blogs, or articles that perform better. If you're interested in writing it and want to get paid for it, I have a library of videos I think you'll love. It'll pop up here. You can uh, take a look at whatever interests you. As always, feel free to pick up a free product from my online store. Link is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching until the end. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.